What's going on fam? It's Coach Angus Beef here. Thanks for stopping by to click on the video. And um, obviously if you're here, it's because you are interested in basically learning a bit about um, yeah, what I actually do. <laughs> um, because apparently it's a foreign concept for some. So um, just yesterday, uh, was it yesterday or was it the day before? I think it was probably like, yeah, a couple of days ago. I um, did a feature on a podcast and um, basically it's for a company that I've um, partnered with to do some, uh, yeah, some coaching and um, you know, just some work with and stuff like that for their students um, on board as their health experts. So part of this podcast was basically me um, touching on some of the stuff that I was going to be teaching them, but for the first block of it, which is what you guys are going to be um, getting some footage of, is basically me sharing some insights into my story and how I got into coaching and um, just how I've personally evolved as a person and why I'm so passionate about what I do and some insights into how I work the magic with what I do. So I um, hope you get some mad insights from watching this. Um, it's about half an hour of footage, so strap yourself in. Obviously, feel free to skip your way along if you're bored on some parts, but we'd love to hear what you think. But either way, let's get stuck into the magic and um, yeah, bring on this uh, <laughs> this dose of live action from this podcast. Hope you guys like it. You start understanding the necessity of your health, then you start to put the value of what you need to do on a daily basis to really consume yourself with the right healthy mentality. Besides that, you will always go back to the way it was and the way you were. And for that, you'll never grow. Instead, you'll plateau or you'll even go down and deflate yourself to your own self. So, I am using the one and only expert in this domain. He's been doing this for quite some time and no better than to do himself. Mr. Angus, how are you? Yes, what an intro. Um, yeah, brother, good. good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Of course. So uh, please tell all our travelers out there listening, who is Angus and what are you all about? Who is Angus? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a question, isn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So uh, for those who haven't been following any of um, you know, my journey or um, don't know me from a bar of soap, I'm someone who has um, been on an amazing journey myself. Like, um, you know, I'm someone who has been dieting the vast majority of his life. Um, I can remember right back to when I was like 13 and a bit, like that was when I was conscious of my body image and trying to change my appearance and change my health and started my first diet then. So I'm 30 now and um, I've been in this game for a long time. Um, you know, I took up the opportunity of making this my career when I was 21. So everything prior to that was dieting, different attempts at trying to get my health down pat. Similar to what you shared before as well, when you were saying that like you've got two weeks on where you feel like you're killing it, but then something happens and it shakes you, and then you're off the wagon entirely, and you're burying your feels and food. Like this was my story for a long time, and like I was at the at the peak or the prime of my like you know emotional eating and struggling with food. Like I was well over 100 kgs. I've also been on the opposite end of the scale where I've been like super skinny and still super self-conscious wow. and struggling with like food and being very restrictive, binge eating and shit like that. So I've been all over the shop. Outside of that, like, you know, I've also been the sort of person who's like grinding hard in the gym and getting nowhere. I've been the sort of person who smashed myself with cardio to try and undo, you know, dieting efforts. I've been the sort of person that's dumped tens of thousands into supplements and shit like that to try and sort my shit out. Um, like, you name it, and I've done it. Like when people say it to me, like, you know, Angus, I've tried everything and I can't lose weight or I've tried this, this, and this, and it's just like, yep, yep. In other words, like, they haven't. Um, but I was the sort of person who definitely has, like. <laughs> um, and yeah, so like, I, um, you know, this is why I can relate so hard to anyone that I work with because I've gone in those shoes before. Um, even when starting with my own business, like, it was all the new, like, all the new world of just like, shit, now I've got to help people. And like, yes, I didn't quite have all my shit together, but like, I still felt that I had a story to give and I could help people to some degree. And then it's been a journey of evolving myself ever since, becoming a sports nutritionist, you know, specializing in helping in those that struggle with their eating like what I used to, freeing them from conventional dieting. Like my message and my branding is very strong. Um, if anyone goes onto my Facebook page, for example, and look at my cover photo, you can pretty quickly tell what I'm about. Um, <laughs> I love making memes, um, you know, I love lifting, I love educating people, I love connecting with people, and, um, you know, and then obviously being, um, you know, part of the, the team with UJ, um, I'm excited for helping people specifically in the area of health with, um, you know, 
uh, imparting my wisdom and um, basically um, yeah, just helping them to see food and health in an entirely different way and I just love challenging people on the norm. So um, yeah, from a very macro point of view, that's a bit of insight into me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess we can, and I guess we can go deeper as you um, yeah ask some more questions. Yeah. So and you, you said it again start a long time ago, but what realized what made you realize health or nutrition in a way that's who you are, or that's what you want to do? For sure. Um, so I guess what got me into the health and fitness space was like when I was twenty. Um, I was a tradesman at the time, or I was almost a tradesman. Yeah, I was almost a tradesman, like I was in my final year of being an apprentice, I believe. And I remember this was when Michelle Bridges used to be on Biggest Loser, um, like that show Biggest Loser. And um, she also had this radio ad, because I think she landed like a gig with the Australian Institute of Fitness, because she had like this radio ad, which was like, if you love health and fitness and being healthy more than you do your, more than you do your job, then why not make it your career? And um, first time I heard that, and I was like, yeah, it's bullshit. Like, I didn't think anything of it. But through repetition, and as you're aware, once something gets drilled in your subconscious mind, it's kind of like, yeah, like it, it rattles with your headspace a little bit, and like you struggle to not think about it because I kept hearing that ad. Um, because as we're aware, radio, like they've got ads all the time. And um, that ad started to just eke its way into me thinking, well, what if I'm out of my headspace? Like, I'm enjoying going to the gym. Um, you know, I'm enjoying trying to eat healthy, I'm, I'm enjoying how it makes me feel, you know. I felt, even back then, I felt that I'd come a long way since younger Angus who knew nothing and, you know, yeah, like, so I was just like, you know what, I reckon I could make something out of it and um, that's when I became a PT. But um, after about a couple or a few years in the game of doing PT, like, I wasn't feeling fulfilled in just doing that because I felt like I was basically being paid to count reps for people babysit people and I wasn't happy with my knowledge and I definitely wasn't happy with where I was at in terms of my physique and stuff like that and that's where I started to evolve <laughs> um, and have commit, committed to evolving ever since like I've still stuffed up sometimes here and there along the way um, like I was still struggling with binge eating and stuff probably up until I was about 23 and a half and even in that time I'd done a competition as well and what was interesting was that I got shredded for a comp but then coming out of that comp like my binges got their worst probably ever was after that because I had no idea of how to return back to normality. Um, and yeah, like it was interesting, hey? So it's like I didn't actually truly overcome binge eating, emotional eating, all this sort of stuff until I was about 24 and a bit. And it's like that stuff that I went through and have applied ever since is what I teach to my clients now. It's what I'll be teaching students in the Metanoia Academy. It's just amazing. And ever since I've fallen in love with food even more, learned the science behind it. Like I know the really nitty gritty stuff that no one needs to know, but that I know that allows me to be able to pick why someone isn't getting results or why they're feeling a certain way or why their hormones are doing this to them or why they have like an insatiable appetite that they can't control or, you know what I mean? Like I've been able to kind of learn so much in between and it's sick. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, that's essential. I mean, it's the little details that makes up the whole picture. Mm, mm. That's so profound. So, and as you continue to grow and stuff, what did you realize the most common trend? A lot of people tend to hate that word dieting, but you're doing something completely opposite. You, you're saying F dieting, instead live your life, but understand, understand your habits, understand your eating. So, yeah, just. Help us understand that concept a little bit. So this concept is something that I introduced to be my forefront branding um, right towards the end of 2019. Um, and the whole concept of it is me and my passion to be able to teach people to love themselves and food again. Because I find that when all someone knows is just how to diet and restrict themselves from food and basically eat this, don't eat this, you know, seeing food as good and bad, all this sort of stuff, like you can't build a sustainable relationship with food, let alone have any chance at hitting your goal weight and maintaining it through restriction. And what people don't understand is that the more that you restrict yourself, the more you set yourself up to binge eat. So it's like that's the environment for binge eating and emotional eating to thrive from, is that restriction. So my whole branding is basically taking people away from everything the conventional media teaches us, taking them out of that just teaching them how to eat again. 
because it's something that's a lost art. Like, to a degree, we know how to do it when we're kids, but then even back then, that's when it starts to become flawed because we learn from our parents, we learn from what we see in ads, we learn, like, we're instilled all this fear and it warps our relationship with food from a young age. Like, even a lot of my clients now, they've been dieting and doing this sort of stuff since they were kids, like, longer than what I have, um, which is crazy. But this is why I'm so passionate from freeing people from that because not enough people are being educated around how the game actually works. And like stats show it, like even where I live in Western Australia, like we're the most obese state in Australia, it's crazy. But Australia as a whole, like we're our heaviest that we ever have been in human history, even though everything that people like need to know can be sourced for free online. And um, yeah, like this is what makes me passionate about what I do because like, People don't know the way, and they're sheep, often following just what they think is normal. But if what was normal in terms of what actually works, works, well then why do we see this sort of stuff that we do? You know what I mean? Like, obesity is trending up, binge eating is trending up in direct correlation. Yes, yes, yes. Because I don't even like how you, what, the way you said it, that food is an art. It's how we use it that makes it either a beautiful masterpiece or something that she can just throw in the bin. Mm. So, how do did, how did we, can, how did we dance accordingly or really use our artistic ability, uh, ability to view food in the right way? I think one of the biggest things that someone needs to embrace first is just look at, oh, how to sort of say it, like, it's all about our beliefs with how we uh, perceive it first in terms of where it all starts. And if they're trying to do external work without making sure that the beliefs are first on point, well then they're going to struggle with the external work because it's as if they're band-aiding underlying problem. So what I teach, for example, is that an outlook that I want a client to have around food is that they see all food as fuel, fuel for performance, fuel for longevity, fuel for nourishment, and then food for pleasure, right? And that basically anything outside of that is a belief that doesn't serve them. And if they can approach food in that way, that then is gonna set the stage for them to be able to start introducing some habits and create basically a positive outlook as they go about trying to approach any strategy, yeah? So for someone to be able to dance with food and have a great connection with it and stuff like that, it all flows from their perception and their beliefs around it. And the more positive that it can be, the more better chance they're gonna to have to be able to, well, yeah, not see anything with any novelty, not hold any food up on a pedestal and see it as like super or, you know, glorified in any way, but also not fear. And then that way, just be at peace with anything that they eat. Like they can then have chocolate in the fridge and biscuits and stuff like that. And then, the, and, and they also will be able to be just as much on point in terms of like feeling at peace with salad and, you know, fruits and vegetables and, you know, foods that, are, that um, will nourish us, because if they can be in that headspace, well then you can create all sorts of masterpieces. But where this sort of shit comes from in terms of people just feeling like garbage and hating themselves and feeling at the mercy of food is because if you look at their beliefs and their values around it and how they perceive it, that is all warped and distorted. Okay, I like that. I like that. So, it's, so you, essentially you're saying that our relationship with food and understanding of it came from the way we were programmed had a youth. We never thought of it as an essential tool that can, I guess, hold some longevity in our understanding has to start from scratch. Is that how you do it? Or do you just take people from exactly where they are now and transform them along the way? A lot of the time, man, it's like essentially starting from scratch because like a lot of the time someone just doesn't even understand the difference between hunger and craving. A lot of the time people don't know how to actually stop eating and like they just eat out of boredom. A lot of the time people don't have a clue what health actually means. I'm yet to ever work with someone that eats enough protein or consumes enough plants that they should be eating like when it comes to me starting with them. So there's often like a lot of uh, unlearning to do. There's often a lot of, yeah, as you said, like starting from scratch. Um, which is fine because like obviously if the person keeps doing what they're doing Nothing's all of a sudden gonna change if they like keep doing what they're doing. That's insanity obviously, you know what I mean? So I, I, I help them to accept that okay cool what you've been doing hasn't been the best way to show love to your body Let's forgive yourself like because if they start from a place of punishment like that's obviously gonna lead to them rebelling on what I teach them 
So it's like starting from a place of just like, okay body, I'm sorry that I've done wrong by you all this time. Please forgive me, here's, here's now how I'm gonna be looking after you moving forward. Um, you know, I love you, etc. Like, as you said, like this game is just as much mindset as it is strategy around food and exercise. Mm, all right. Yeah. And um, how, how would you take them through the journey? I mean, like, what are they expecting to receive as they go through a journey with you? So usually more often than not, because someone has like restricted themselves so much and they've been, you know, technically yo-yo dieting for some time and they've been their weight has been a cons consistent kind of cycle of lose a bunch of weight, trying to revert back to normality, not doing it very well, gaining it all back, but then going that extra little bit further down because like, you know, they just can't seem to control themselves. That goes on, but then they start a new diet, so it's like they go backwards in weight again, so they've been able to lose some weight, so it's like they carried a bit of a cycle for some time. A lot of my clients will fit into that being their scenario, so that will either land them in with like, fairly skinny or, or like skinny fat type body or they'll be on the opposite where that has been happening to them but it's resulted in them being quite overweight um, or maybe even leading towards obese um, and then I come in and I've got to then go right let's not even put your focus on your weight at all for a while let's focus on restoring and rebuilding all of this shit and just getting everything operating as it should so that, that way they can have any chance at losing fat with what I can teach them moving forward because it's like, <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand that your body's smart and like if you work against it for too long, it will basically put up all these walls to stop your efforts of trying to be able to get it to lose weight. And evidence of this is like, I've worked with some clients where they can't even drop a gram of weight eating less than a thousand calories as like a fully grown adult. Like, <laughs> um, so it's like, it's crazy. and. Your body's built for survival, it's smart, and it picks up on all the restriction and all the cycles. And then each time you go to then try and diet, the more that it's become accustomed to your efforts, the more resistance it will put up, and the more that it will play with your hunger and make you never feel full and say it, this sort of stuff, that's your body working against you. So a lot of my work initially is actually on restoring and getting them healthy and building good habits before we even focus on, cool, let's try and lose some fat, or let's try and, you know, you know what I mean? Um, so it's like it's a multifaceted process. No one's ever exactly the same when I work with them and even with just how we approach like um, you know, their exercise and training and stuff like that, everyone's got different parameters and external factors like their environment around work and whether they have kids to provide for or whether they're single or whatever. So this is what makes it interesting. This is why I love the coaching game so much is because I can work my magic in so many different ways based on where someone is at where they want to get to and um, then the fun comes of just how we bridge the gap together over time. Wow. And how long does this transformation usually take? So it's like, it's subjective based on I guess how much of a hole they've dug themselves into. More often than not, I'll work with someone for about a year because three to six months of that is just about getting them healthy before we can even like start making any aesthetic changes. But then after that, like, also, once again, like we, within a, we then can start focusing on aesthetic change and that sort of thing. So it's like, oh, we usually work with someone for about a year, but more often than not, that will lead towards a year and a half to two years, maybe longer. Because yes, I want to get them to a stage where they have achieved a good healthy weight, but I want to also get them to a stage where they are happy with themselves, where they truly love how they look and feel and can look at themselves naked in the mirror and be like, I love you because they're so confident in who they are and how they look. I want to get them to a stage where their weight is stable and that they can maintain it easily without feeling like they're doing anything for a good three months. I want to get them to a stage where they don't feel any anxiety around you know, food when they travel or when they're going out for food with meals and I'm mean, sorry, going out for, with friends to have meals. <laughs> um, you know, like so they don't have any anxiety around that. I want to get them to a stage where they, you know, can not track any food on an app like my fitness power for like a week on end without feeling stressed or that they're doing anything bad. I want them to not have any like external reliances at all and just feel a complete peace internally with their knowledge around food and the habits they've built. So it's like I care more about this ingrained stuff that's going to bulletproof them so that they know how to basically keep themselves free, lean, happy, healthy forever. 
Um, and I find a lot of people don't teach this sort of stuff that are in my field. They just focus on, cool bro, we hit your goal weight, and off you go. And this is why more often than not, that person is gonna regain the weight that they lost within about six to 12 months. Like stats show us that it's gonna take, I mean, so that, that it's 90% likely. So this is the stuff that I don't stand for, which is why I won't take someone on for a little short-term stint of coaching, because yeah. I wanna free them from the game forever not just like not just create some sort of like surface level shift i want to transform every part of who they are and that's what i focus on that's how i feel the results trans transpire as the times go by but i kind of help them to see their own progress from their own perspective which is very brand new and i like the fact that you said you allow them to stand naked and value their body and really appreciate who they are i think that's such a powerful very powerful way of viewing health and their body alongside of it. Oh yeah, man, I remember the first time I was able to do that, I cried with tears of happiness because like for so many years prior, I couldn't handle looking at any photos of myself. Like, I don't even have photos of me when I was at my heaviest. Like, you see what I mean? Because of just how shit my body image was and how much I hated like, because obviously with photos, you can't hide from them. Like, when you see your reflection, you can't hide from Like, it shows you physically how you are. And for a lot of us, we're so attached to our body image that if, it, if our body image is shit, we take on so much negative self-talk associated to it. So, for me to be able to get someone to a stage where they can have confidence with their shirt off or have confidence with being intimate with their partner with the lights on, where they can stand naked in front of the mirror and say, I love you to themselves. Like, that's powerful. Like, this is the sort of stuff that makes, yeah me just like ah, proud coach moment yes um you know what i mean because like to be able to achieve that in my own life for the first time like i never thought that was possible even to be able to do photo shoots and all this sort of stuff which is now second nature to me because i've been doing it for so long but like i remember the first time i got on stage like i got off stage and i broke down in tears because i was like like i didn't win but like you know what i mean like i <laughs> That was the equivalent of me running a marathon, which for a lot of people they won't ever do because it's too hard of a goal to train for. That was my equivalent, you know what I mean? Like it was special. And that's what I want people to achieve, like that level of special and then have the stuff, the knowledge, the habits and everything in place to keep their prize forever. So how do you monitor their progress and, and, and stay on top of the work that they do when most of the work that you do with them is online? Yeah, yeah, some of them are overseas. So this is where, um, yeah, power of technology, because I guess if technology was as advanced as it is, and we, and like, you know, obviously we're socially connected and all this sort of stuff through social media, it's, um, it's fairly easy to be able to do this journey closely with any client that I work with. Like I've got clients in USA, I've got some in Europe, I've got lots here in Australia, I've got some in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. But um, yeah, so like through, say for example, like um, how I have been doing it for a while, like it's changing at the moment, it's evolving because I'm building a, um, an app um, through a software company so that I can take my service to the next level even more to make myself even better for clients. But like I will write that programming for them in terms of training, in terms of targets that I want them to aim for with nutrition. When need be, I will write meal plans for the person based on preferences and what sort of food they want to eat and how I want to see their, um, you know, their palate improve. Um, like I'll be able to provide them everything that they need quite easily, and then I can just attach it through, you know, through Messenger, through Facebook. Um, my clients get access to me all the time through there to be to be able to update me with how they're going. Um, you know, we use a few external apps as well, so they can track food, so they can learn what's in what they're eating. Um, I teach them a lot of mindset work. They've got like a uh, access to my private site that I've got for members where they'll be working through a lot of content. Um, basically just harnessing all my educational material. I've got a private group that they're in where they can be sharing the journey with my other students um, and clients that I'm working with. Um, obviously they follow me, so they see me modeling all this from the front end. Um, so it's pretty thorough. And then we track progress as well through the stuff that they send me at the end of each week. So like I just look at data, I look at trends, I look at how their adherence is going, I look at how much they're enjoying the process. I can also see if they're hiding from me in terms of just like they missed the check-in or if they haven't messaged me in a few days, so it's pretty easy to tell if they're then going through something emotionally, personally, 
or maybe like because I can easily just find out and then it's like oh cool well that's happening with work how can we work around that or this has happened with your relationship uh, sweet yeah. like do we need to pause coaching for a couple of weeks to allow you for this or maybe they've lost their job or something crazy has happened but my goal through the curveballs that life will bring is just to just condition them to being the sort of person who kind of like is the sort of person who's like yes problems awesome growth opportunities and as you and I know like where happiness comes from is the development that happens from us solving problems where people become yes. depressed and sad and in a sort of negative spiral is when they hide from problems and they stop growing you know what I mean so I condition them to being excited for growth, being excited for expanding themselves as a person because I helped them very early on to see that if they want all this growth and to become a new person, but they try and do it by staying in their comfort zone, that it's never gonna happen and their coaching's gonna be a waste wow. of time. So it's a continual development of us moving forward together. Um, I, I told them to kind of see it as if we're in a relationship where like we've got trust between each other and we've got open communication, but then they're allowing me to hold them to a high standard in terms of like rock solid yes. accountability and keeping them committed to what they said they wanted because obviously a lot of people will say they want x y and z in their own journey but then they don't back it up with any action and that's often because they don't have any clarity around what they should be doing but they also don't have any accountability to follow it forward which is obviously where i come in to make sure that i can bring direction and kind of be like a rudder to their ship to keep them steered yeah so that they keep moving forward and follow the path that I set that I know is gonna get them to where they wanna be. And then obviously educate them as we go along so that, that way I'm kind of teaching them how to fish. So that, that way once I've gotten them to where they wanna be, they know how to fish for themselves rather than me being the sort of person who's just like, hey, go do this bro, and not giving them any context or education as we go through. If I was to do that, they're obviously gonna then become the sort of person where once I get them to where they wanna be and I'm taken away from the equation, you know what I mean? They were dependent on me and therefore they don't even know how to fish for themselves. Yes, exactly. And now, do you find it hard for people to stay honest throughout their journey? Or do you find that people just find it saying, you know what, I submit to you, show me what you got? Well, that's the thing, cause like I'm pretty good at being able to tell how serious someone is and whether I align with them or not from the start anyway. And if I'm not vibing with them as a person and if I can't take them serious, I'll honestly tell them that and give them like, kind of like make them prove why I should work with them. Um, because like, you know, me working with someone, like it's just as much a commitment of me committing to them than it is them committing to me and the goal. <laughs> so it's like, if I'm not convinced that they're gonna take this seriously and that they've got what it takes, I just won't take them on and I'll refer them elsewhere. And then obviously when they're in the trenches with me, it's a means of following all that up with action. And like, it's fairly easy to see once again, whether they're being honest with me and honest with themselves. And I will have no dramas like calling them out on if I'm not seeing what I want, or like if I'm not feeling that they're playing full out, this sort of stuff, because <clears throat> obviously they've got friends and family that can tell them what they want to hear, and that's going to keep them comfortable. But with me, I'm here to tell them what they need to hear so they can grow and so they get the best value from coaching. There we go, fam. Hope you enjoyed uh, hearing some insights into all my Angus beef and um, some of my past because for a lot of people who are maybe only following me on YouTube or have only been following me on social media or but haven't been um, you know, actively seeing my posts and whatever, um, great opportunity for you to be able to see, yeah, well, where I came from in terms of just what I've gone through, my, some of my upbringing, how I got into the health and fitness space and um, yeah, the magic that I work as a coach. So as you can you know, tell and um, you know, what you heard, I'm someone that is deeply passionate about helping people to just get out of that restrictive paradigm and relationship with food because I'm so sick of seeing people trying to be, um, you know, perfect, if you will, in terms of trying to maintain such control over trying to, you know, lose fat and hit their goal weight and stuff like that. But this is the stuff that the conventional dieting game doesn't teach us. Like, you're sold a dream that it's gonna be sunshine, lollipops and rainbows and you'll hit your goal weight and it'll be smooth sailing, but you and I both know that that's only part of it. And um, yeah, it's the after part that um, 
is what's lacking. And this is why so many people will typically rebound and struggle with their weight on going. And this is stuff that I am passionate about helping people to sort their shit out in this avenue. So if you can relate to any of this, um, feel free to check out some of the links in the description. You'll be able to check out some of my free stuff, free resources. You can check out my coaching. Um, and if you're keen to follow some more of my journey on social media, click some of my social media handles below. You can find me on Instagram, good old Facey B. And um, yeah, I'll be see here on the old tubes. So if you're new to the channel, um, go and check out some other stuff, some other content, some client success stories, some cool knowledge bomb videos, some eating videos and all sorts. Um, and if you're fresh, um, not in terms of like, um, you know, like you're a subscriber and you're returning back to the channel, give the video some love, let me know um, yeah, how you found it or if you learned anything new about me that you didn't previously know. But thanks for watching fam. Peace, big love, see you next time in the YouTube world.